Um, so, uh, my name is Shine Bosch, and I'm going to talk about how to encourage kids to code. Um, this is a little bit about me. I like a lot of things, as you can see. Um, but I also like coding a lot. And the reason why I like coding is because of my amazing family, which my mom and my dad are both here. And that's my brother. And my mom and dad have been really great in teaching me the importance of code and how it can be such a great tool to have in your life. And at first, I didn't wake up one day and decide, I want to code, because I don't think anybody really thinks that first. <laughs> <laughs> However, because, yeah, anyways. Um, but I'm going to be talking a little bit about code and what can help make coding a little more fun to do for maybe kids my age, um, or youth, as you could say. Um, one of the basics that we're going to talk about is Ace of Coders, which is a coding competition that my dad runs. Um, we had one last year, and that is a photo from it, and I'll answer two questions um, during the slide. But the first one is, is coding fun? Now, that's a little hard because, I'm, for me personally, I don't think of the word fun when I think of coding, but I think it's really great, and as you can see in the photo, um, the kids who seem to be participating are laughing and having fun with friends and battling it out, which I'll talk about later. Um, the next question is, what is the goal of free coding? Before I answer that question, I have to answer the question, what is the goal of, what is free coding? Free code camp is where students can learn HTML, CSS, and eventually JavaScript, um, and this allows them to qualify for the Ace of Coders final, which is the final for the coding company that my dad wants. Now, Free Code Camp is actually a great website, which I have actually um, been, I've actually done, um, where it teaches you how to code pretty easily, and it gives you step by step, and you get to do it by making an app, which I'll talk about later. Um, the, this is the first screen that you see when you start your um, journey of learning, learning code on Free Code Camp, which it tells you to write, hello world, but I wrote, hello, talk to us, because we're here. Um, so later on, you're going to be learning how to make a cat photo app because we don't already have enough cats on the internet. Um, and as you can see, the code is a lot. This is actually my code that we took from the website when we were doing it. But um, it's a really great website because it builds onto your code while you're doing it so it doesn't start over like when you keep on going forward. Um, it gives you instructions, you run the tests, really cool, really fun, keep on making really cute cat pictures that they make. It's really cool. Um, what I want to talk about is something that actually happened with me. When I was going through um, Free Code Camp, I came to a part where I, my code had an error in it. And I didn't know what it was, and I looked, couldn't find it, so I stopped because I felt really <laughs> mad that I didn't get it. Um, and I went away, came back a day later, still didn't know what was wrong. Came back three days later, still didn't know until I finally just said, you know what? I'm going to ask my dad, because he knows a lot about code. Um, and he actually sat down with me, showed me what I did wrong, which was like a little thing that I read incorrectly and I continued. But what the thing I took away from this was, why was this not as obvious as everything else? And I think it was because, you know, coding is awesome, but it's not super duper easy. Some people have a talent for it, some people don't. But it is a great tool. And I think that if you come to a point where you can't go forward, for me personally, you can, it's hard to kind of like ask for help, but if you do, you can continue on and you can go further. Um, and so that was a really great point. And later on, if you go through Free Code Camp, I haven't been sure yet, but you get to JavaScript, where they teach you, and it's the same as Python, which was before, and it gives you step by step, and you add on to your code until you make a cute cat photo app. Um, now, if you don't want to make a cat photo app, here is another website which I <coughs> love. Like, this is like the coolest website in my opinion. I have played this. I just don't know how long I've played this. But anyways, it is such a cool um, game, and I'll tell you why. It has multiple levels and islands that you can have journeys on, and you can actually build or choose your own hero, which I chose Captain Anya Weston. You can choose your own language, and you go through different challenges and you can save people, prisoners, free prisoners, defeat bad guys. Um, but this is the first level or so after you get started, where it just gives you your hero, gives you a little maze thing, gives you a gem and gives you spikes. And it says, move your hero to the gem. And it's very basic from there. You just do that. And it 
goes done and it gets you a success. Ta da! Because, yeah. Um, and then later on it adds on, but it's a really fun game to kind of enjoy and play. And I think that because it's so cool, it has been a great um, website to use for our Ace of Coders finals because it is just a video game and it's fun where you can go and you can solve problems and it's just a really great way to interact coding with fun. Now, the Ace of Coders final that we have is a, a little other part of Code Combat and it's like Dota 2, um, which is like a free to play multiplayer online battle arena. And yes, it is as cool as it sounds. Um, what we have here is the schools that participated in last year's Ace of Coders coding competition. And as you can see, two schools went against each other, the winner would go on and on and on until you get first, second, and third um, winners. Um, and that is what um, they were actually watching, as you can see all the children laughing and pointing, and it was really cool. Um, I'm actually going to show you a video of one of the battles that was actually um, won and played um, during the, uh, the, the competition. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, okay. If I can explain a little bit about what happens, is that there's four points, as you can see, and there's two sides. There's red and there's blue. Um, and you, there's multiple codes that you can do and multiple players you can do, but the basis of the battle is that you, the winner has all of the points. So you can put different little people to your points and you just fight until you get there and it's just a cool game. <laughs> Um, but this year's Ace of Coders competition, um, there's a coder competition that happened this year, and we already have 254 who have already registered. But I think that this is a great opportunity to involve people that you might know, like young people, because it is such a great atmosphere to be a part of. I was actually there, it was my first co coding competition I have ever been to. I was not involved, but since my dad was running it, I went and I watched. And it was just really cool seeing how both teams would be in the front when their competition was happening and they would all be rooting and everybody in the audience would be like woohoo and yeah and when people would get killed or people it would be like boo and it was just it was really really cool and I really um, I really think that it's such a great way for kids to learn how amazing coding is. There might be students in different schools who don't know that they have the ability to code or have never been introduced to the idea, but because of these competitions, they can actually have a part and be a part of a group who know how much coding is fun. Now, I actually have homework for you guys. Now, that's a little weird since I'm younger than you and I'm giving you homework. Uh, but my homework <laughs> for you is that, at a minimum, spend five minutes to walk a child you know through the first level of code combat. And if they like it, that's, if they don't like it, that's fine. But if they do, they could be better prepared for the jobs of the future. And I don't know what the jobs of the future are going to be, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the future, but I do know that technology is going so many places right now, and that in the future, technology might have a place in every single job that there is. And learning how to code and knowing how to code, it won't hurt, because <laughs> that's really great. Anyways, that's all. If you have any questions, please feel to leave me a comment at facebook.com. I hope you enjoyed my talk, and thank you all for listening. And since the end of my presentation, I would like to leave you all with one final note. Live long and prosper. <laughs>
this kid was playing and he liked it enough that level four, mom was really saying, it's time to come to dinner. And he's like, no mom, I can't, I'm coding. <laughs> That's so awesome. How old do you start? Hmm? How old do you start? Well, I think, when, when did I start? <laughs> they, this is really weird. My kids weren't actually allowed to start coding for quite a while because I figured they have their whole life to learn how to do math and follow rules and solve for X. And so for most of their um, primary school years, it was go sing, go music, do all create, 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 create. And I knew eventually school would force them to learn calculus and algebra. So <laughs> sure enough, one day when I saw them both doing calculus and algebra, I said, OK, we can do a little bit of code. <laughs> it's in our blood. <laughs> Any other questions for Shannon? <laughs> you want to answer that question about code academy? Code Academy, um, so I like Code Academy. I, I tend to use just about everything but Code Academy. Uh, just, no, just because of how easy it is to work with people like Code School. I like Code School. Um, free Code Camp is completely open source and completely free. Uh, both Code School and, Code Acad and, and, and Free Code Camp and even Treehouse have nice APIs. So if you're an educator or someone who runs national competitions, it's easy to see what people have on their public profiles. And uh, Code Academy is just, each time I've engaged with them, I've never quite come away feeling that I could, all the time students spent would be on a public profile that they could take with them forever and use with other things. I think if you're all 100% Code Academy, that might be a, a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we usually use these days in most of the schools I work with, both uh, undergraduate, masters, and, and at the JC and secondary school level, are code, our free code camp, code school, um, code combat, and then any custom things that have been built in Singapore that we want to include in a single competition. All right. Any questions about Shannon's talk? I don't know.